<laughs> okay. So, let me swap my camera over to the Sashiko table. Okay. And, let's see. Got that. Okay. Okay, everybody. I'm going to move this just a little bit so we can get a good look. All I've got loaded into my, um, for thread, I have just have plain, old, I have black, um, black arrow quilt 40 weight thread in it. And here's, I was working plain last night. Here's some stuff. So you can see, this is what Sasha co stitching looks like. This is just on a quilt sandwich. This is what the front looks like. It looks like hand stitching. This is the smallest stitch it will make. This is the largest stitch it will make. Anyway, so these are my little samples here. So I'm going to take this purple. Now this comes, I have this right now in purple. Let's see, purple, black, turquoise, gold, copper are the colors I have this in right now. And I'm going to just cut off a piece, piece of it. Okay. And here's what I was practicing with. Check this out. I'm going to redo both of these here because this is actually... This is what that ladder yarn looks like stitched down with the Sashiko. And I'll show you what this looks like. Check out the texture that it makes. It's really pretty. And then this one right here, that is that um, antique gold cording that I just had in my serger looper. And that's what it looks like stitched down. Okay. So what I've got, I've got it set at five length and a three width. Okay, and I'm gonna put it under my, my presser foot. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do, because I want it to I want it to take one stitch, full stitch cycle at a time, and I want it to stop in the needle down position. So I'm just gonna press this button twice. You have to do it fast, and then it'll blink green. That tells me it'll take a full needle stitch cycle and stop in the down position. I'm going to put my stitch, my foot presser, over here, my height. I'm going to raise that up to its highest at three. And what will happen is I'll be able to fit this cording underneath it without having to raise and lower the presser foot. So, let me get that camera closer, because we're going to get started. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to find the midway point for this strand, okay, right there. And I'm going to take this and put it in behind the foot, bring it underneath the foot to the back of the needle, then I'm going to cross it right in front and take one stitch. Okay. And then I'm going to cross it again and I can let it be loopy. Maybe I'm going to make a few where it's got little loops sticking out. Come on. There we go. All I'm going to do is just press the foot control one time. It'll make one complete stitch cycle. Okay. I'm going to do it again. And I'm pushing those loop the where I crossed it right to right in front of that needle. So 
some really cool decorative effects using the yarn. You can also do this on a serger. This technique, you will have to raise and lower that presser foot a bunch of times, of course, on, on a serger. You could also do it on a sewing machine, whether it be the Altair or the Crescendo or the new Chorus, any of those, or the Accomplish, or any, literally any machine with a straight stitch, you could mimic this. However, with the Sasha Co, you get that beautiful heirloom hand look stitch with it. Okay. So whenever you, whenever you're, you're using the Sasha Co, and you're ready to take your piece out. First, you got to get this back so it's blue up here, okay? Because that'll put the bobbin and the needle back up in its highest position. Press that button once. It just turned blue. Raise the presser foot and pull it straight back. And then take your thread and put it into this little groove on the side right here that has a knife in it and pull what that does, that keeps that thread, that keeps tension on that thread so it will form a stitch on your next go round. Check that out. Now there's so much more you could do with it. You could put some more layers in there. But you'll see here in a moment another way to do it. And let's get a different one this time. Okay. Let's get that ladder yarn. So I have this in two colors. This has got lavender and taupe in it has some <clears throat> brighter pastel lavender and pink and blue and green and yellow it's really pretty sparkly very metallic but why it's called ladder yarn is this check it out because it, it's kind of like an open weave it makes like little ladder rungs okay so I'm going to cut off a piece of this, and we're going to apply that to our little sample piece here. <coughs> Excuse me. And once again, I'm just going to get the two ends to meet, and there's the fold. <coughs> and I'm going to start this one up here. Yeah, I'm going to start it right here and get those ends kind of tied down where I left off before. So I'm going to put it right here and lower my presser foot. I'm going to do a quick two button punch. There we go. And now I'm going to put my loose metallic thread from earlier right underneath there. I'm going to bring my ladder yarn around. And I'm going <clears> to <throat> cross it right in front. Hit the presser foot. Come here, you. I need to get my foot control over here where my feet can get it. There we go. Okay. There we go. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to take both of these together and we'll hold them to one side. Then I'm gonna, every time it stops, I'm going to switch it to the other side. You can get some speed up doing it in this technique, but what it does, it adds all this beautiful, yummy texture. And then I'm gonna pull it, I'm gonna twist down it this way a little bit. And now I'm going to separate the two strands. Do a stitch. Then I'm going to cross them. But I'm not going to put it tied up against the needle. I'm going to have a little bit of looseness to it. Not as loose as that first one. Here we go. It's kind of like tying a shoelace. Gonna get it just so it all goes right up underneath there. I 
Everybody, this is one of my all-time favorite machines. I love my Sasha Co. machine. <clears throat> when I saw, this is a Sasha Co. 2, when Nancy Seaman demoed this on her PBS show. I went out immediately and purchased one. I come from a family of hand quilters, and that's what I thought I would only use it for, was to quilt with. Boy, howdy. <laughs> There's so much more this machine does. I like to make garments on this machine. You make a beautiful French seam with it. I'm just going to bring it over here to the edge. But that's what, what ladder yarn is. It's a filigreed yarn. It's all polyester and metallic lurex. It's really beautiful. I have some beautiful Christmas red coming in. It hasn't, it hasn't um, left left Europe yet. It begins its customs process when I have it shipped to me <clears throat> in Belgium. Then it goes to Cologne, Germany, and then it hits the United States and has to clear customs again over here before it makes its way to me. And boy, howdy, has shipping went up, especially on international packages. Oh my goodness. Okay, almost to the out here to the edge. One more. Hopefully, I probably just broke my thread then because you're not supposed to take a stitch if there's not fabric underneath it. And I see it flashing yellow, so we'll see. No, oh, nope, I think I saved it. Nope, it broke. That's okay. It's easy to thread. But check this out. Right here is what I just did. It has texture. and it sparkles, it catches every little bit of light. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to re-thread my machine. Oops. So the first thing you have to do when you're threading your machine, you have to hold in on the button until this bottom light comes on and stays on. So it's green and there's a picture of a bobbin right there. Now I can open my bobbin door what that does, it positions the bobbin so you can remove it. Okay, so there's my bobbin. And what I'm going to put in it now, I'm going to put a metallic thread. Believe it or not, the Sasha Co. loves metallic thread. This is 40 weight metallic Madeira. Okay. And I'm going to put that in my bobbin. Oops, I'm going to put that in my bobbin. <laughs> Okay. All thumbs tonight. My goodness. Can't hold on to anything. Get that, that under the bobbin case. And then, we'll click here. See those two protrusions? There's a hole. There's two, two flaps right there. Your thread has to go from this side where the bobbin is through both holes to the front. Let me see here. Get a better grip on into this thread. Now, if I find if I'll hold the bobbin, those two little holes, so against the machine where it's really white, it's really it's much easier to get it to align the holes. I don't even have my bifocals on. I may have to change. I have to trim my thread. There we go. Let's trim that thread. Okay. There we go. And now that thread of the bobbin, the front of the bobbin is where the latch on it is. These go down. This little fuzzy. Uh, Evie Hawkins calls that the bunny tail. It goes 
in the upwards position, like so. And we'll get that clicked right into place there. And then you want to hold on to about a 10, 10 inch tail of thread. And I'm going to put the presser foot down. And I'm going to turn the hand wheel slowly towards me. And it just caught the thread on the needle. So I'm going to oh, never let off the slack on this. I'm going to close the door. No, I'm not. I'm going to raise the presser foot. I'm going to take a stiletto or tweezers or a scissor and just get my, have my screwdriver for it. I'm just going to rake that thread right here to the side. That pulls it up from the bobbin case area. Now I'm going to hold on to it and shut the door. Put it through the thread cutter slot and pull back on it towards me and it's ready to go. Okay, so I'm going to take a few stitches without any cording under it first, just to make sure I've got everything threaded properly. And I didn't have enough thread left out. Okay, so let's do that again. There's another one I'm going to show you. Okay. And the bobbins for the Sasha Co. take the same bobbins as her other baby lock machines do. As far as the Altair, the Crescendo, the Destiny, the Solaris, they all take the same, same size class 15 bobbin. There we go. Okay. Yeah, we'll get this put back in. Hold you up there. Raise presser foot, swipe it to the left, close the door. I'm just going to hold that down there. And then we're going to take a stitch. There we go. There we go. Now, let me take a few stitches here. Okay. So I have another really cool type of a yarn that's called Butterfly. This is an example of it. You can see it's got like little butterfly wings on it. Okay. The cranberry color. The rich, um, rich pastel, the pastel and the full tone. This is a cool one, though. This is the Butterfly Yarn, and it is <clears throat> black and gold and silver metallic. Check that out. I'm just going to cut off a piece of it. There we go. And I'm going to double click. Now I can put this underneath the back of my foot. Okay, across it in front. So what I just did there by doing that, it locks that that yarn or three. You can do that with 
with heavy 12 weight threads or 8 weight or 5 weight threads. And then what I'm going to do next though, I'm going to do the side to side. And just move it back and forth. You know, think of it like a decorative trim on a garment. Or you could do use the stuff to make scarves. I'm gonna do a scarf class here pretty soon. It's a lot of fun, and I have a big announcement to make once I get back to the computer. We finish up here. Okay, I'm gonna come off the end of it. you get the idea you can use literally just about anything you want to to do this technique there we go okay I'm just gonna trim off the excess and why I like to start and stop on an edge that's going to be usually, usually that is going to end up in a seam line somewhere and just locks everything into place when you do it like that. But there we go. Easy peasy.